Hello YouTube and welcome back to Pacuccino! <laughs> and today I thought we will do something more informative again after all these hauls from my last three to four videos. So I thought about doing a video as you saw in the title already, a tips and tricks for figure collecting beginners because I've seen a lot of them around and I just want to give some of my own because some of the tips that I want to tell you guys is not something that I've seen in any other videos. Some may be repetitive, some may be new to you. So I hope you will find this helpful because that's my take on it if you begin really as a collector and what would be important. As you can see, I, written, I have written it down manually, so not on my computer or anywhere, because sometimes it's easier to collect your thoughts when you write it down. So, you're a new collector, you have never ordered a figure before, but you have seen all these YouTube videos, you have seen all these amazing figures, and now you want to collect some of them yourself, but you don't know how to start or where to start, Fear not, I will give you some tips and tricks how to begin your collection. I will start with my number one tip for you and that's just wait. Take your time to do a pre-order. Don't immediately hit the pre-order button as soon as you see a figure that you're interested in pop up on an, any site wherever you order. Because Especially if you begin, you're just overwhelmed. All the figures out there are super beautiful, are super nicely done. You still don't really have a path or an idea what you want to collect or what you really don't want to collect. So in the beginning, just every figure that you see is like, I, I want it because it's beautiful. And this one is beautiful and this one is too. So I would really recommend take a step back relax and sleep at least one night and one day over it. Take your time. You have no hurry whatsoever. They will not run out immediately. You will always find the figure somewhere before it's released. So wait at least one day before you hit the pre-order just to give your mind some time to think about it do I really want the figure or just do I just find her really, really cute or really, really beautiful, but I don't see myself really wanting it in the end. Because this will prevent you from getting regrets by or getting a ton of figures, which in the end you don't really care about. Because it's not your style or you collect figures, which you later realize you don't want and need to sell again, which is never a problem. But I would really recommend to take your time to really decide if you want this figure or not because I see a lot of people who don't take this time and then they have a lot of regrets and a lot of impulse buys and then it gets a hassle later on. So take your time. I always even take more than one day and one night. Maybe I take one week or two weeks or even a month or even two months. Because then I'm really sure if I'm, visit if I'm visiting this site every day, every single day I look at these pictures of this particular figure, then I know I want this figure. So then I will pre-order it and then I will be happy that I pre-ordered it. And I will not regret it when I get her. And sometimes it's even like this. I, don't, I forget that the figure even existed. So just put it in your bookmark, in your wish list, and see how it goes for a few days if you really want it or if you never look at it again. Then it can go and you don't need to pre-order it. Sometimes it can happen that you wait too long and then the pre-order closes. But fear not. That's where my tip number two comes into play. And that's if you have missed the pre-order and the figure is not released, just leave it in your bookmark or wish list because people will cancel their order. For example, on Amiami, if I miss a pre-order there, I usually put it in my bookmark 
And if I notice that the pre-orders have closed and I really still want the figure, and I'm regretful that I didn't pre-order it, then I know as soon as one more spot opens, I will hit the pre-order button and I will not regret it. And sometimes it's like it's closed. Oh, well, whatever, sad, but I'm not that regretful. And then the figure can go as well. So what I also want to say is that a lot of people will cancel it because of impulse buy, as I said in my first tip for you guys. So especially near the release date, a lot of people will realize, oh, actually, I don't want this figure and will cancel it again. So spots will open and you can put in your pre-order, just check your bookmarks regularly and you will be fine. I promise. And sometimes even if you have missed it because you just begun on it already released, sometimes they get even more stuck in and the figure will be available even through the pre-orders were all sold out because they have more stock or sometimes even when the figure is released some people will cancel it for whatever reasons and then you can snatch this one up as well and this happens for a lot of figures but of course sometimes there can be a figure which will be tricky to find afterwards if it's released or where during the pre-order period because a lot of people want this figure. Then I would recommend checking some local sites because people tend to pre-order on a Japanese site before they pre-order on the local site because of differences in the price. Which brings me to my third tip to you. And that's if you're new, and you just want to start collecting the figures from any Japanese store and doing a self-import, stick to one place only at the beginning. Just choose from all these options. There's CD Japan, there's Ninden Games, there's Ami Ami, there's Big in Japan. There's so many different shops out there. Just choose one at the beginning. Choose one where you will be comfortable with where there are some which they will fit but which will fit your needs and wants for example do you want to pay upfront then choose a shop who has this option or do you want to pay later then choose another shop but i wouldn't recommend to order five figures on five different shop sites because then you will lose the overview about what where and how you ordered what and which one did you pay already and which not. So I would really recommend to just choose one option, uh, one shop at first, because even through a lot of good recommendations from a lot of people about the certain shops can be there, but it's your first time and you have no experience whatsoever before that, if you have never done this before. So I'm usually pretty unsure if I order from a new shop so I would just say, do it in one shop, collect some experience from it, see how you like it. If you don't like it, choose another shop. Or if you like it and do some more pre-order there, then you're fine. And then you can start to branch out. I'm not saying to never check some other sites, but I think for the beginning it's the best to just start with one shop. And because you have pre-ordered so many figures already, and even five figures are already a lot, in my opinion, if you're starting just brand new and they will release all in different months and you're like, oh no, which figure releases when and how much do I need to pay for it and by budgeting and whatever, you have all these questions. So my tip number four is start an Excel sheet or a spreadsheet for your figures. The idea behind this is that you have all the information that you need, that you can check without checking all your sites where you have pre-ordered them. I would recommend to just start your, speech, uh, your spreadsheet with first column being the month of release where the figure will be released. The second column will be the name of the figure. And you can even choose to put in the scale of the figure and the manufacturer if you want. Then I would recommend doing a column with the price of the figure in whatever 
currency you will pay this for. So be it Japanese yen, be it yuan, be it USD, be it euro, whatever. Just put it there. Next, it's really important to write down which website you have ordered it from. And in the last column, I would always recommend to write down if you have already paid it, if you have put in, if you have put in a reservation fee, or if you have fully paid it, or if you're doing monthly payments for it, insta if you're doing installment payment for this figure. So that you will know if you have already paid this figure off by the time it will be released or not. And also if you already paid for shipping or not. Because it will be important and the more figures you pre-order, the less you will take up in your mind. So I would really recommend just start your spreadsheet, your Excel sheet, and you will be fine. You can cross out the figures that you already received. You will see which figures are still open, which have you not paid for. And so on and so forth. It's also really good for budgeting because you will see on the prices how many or how much do you have to pay for this one and will it fit in your budgeting or will it not fit into your budget. Really update it regularly, especially if figures get pushed back and released at a later date so that you can see how full is your month, how much more can you get or how much less do you need to get. Something like this. It really helps a lot. So I would really recommend it. And my last tip, my number five for you is don't get influenced or have FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. And I think the fear of missing out usually starts because you read a lot of comments to this figure, how other people see this figure. You want to know what do they think? Do they have the same mind as you about the figure? And then sometimes I also notice that a lot of people just say, oh, you have to get it now because aftermarket will be horrible and 10,000 people are getting it and you're kind of getting anxious about whether you will still get the figure or not. Please distance yourself from it because they are not always right. I usually really hate when people are writing, oh, I pre-ordered her because her aftermarket will be crazy. I hate this comment. It's totally irrelevant whether the aftermarket price will rise up or not. It has nothing to do with your decision right now. Because either you can afford to get it now, which usually uh, should not be a problem because the release date will be in XX month from a year or another year or the year after. So we will have time to put money aside or you can see, okay, in this month I have a lot of pre-orders, so I can't afford it. So you can just put it in your wish list or bookmark and decide at a later date. And the next is sometimes it's not the case. The figure will not explode in the aftermarket. For example, the Jabani Yumiko Bunny figure, one fourth, was said that her price will go up afterwards. And now her price even dropped. So they are not always right about these comments and don't let yourself be pushed into this to get this figure just because maybe the aftermarket will go crazy. Yeah, a lot of times the aftermarket will be crazy, but it always depends on the figure. And sometimes it's just not the case. Don't get swept into the hype because of all the YouTubers. I mean, I'm a YouTuber, figure YouTuber myself, and it always looks like they buy every figure out there they're buying so many figures they have all the money in the world and that's not the case i think it's mostly the more you present the more viewers you get and that's how why they are doing it why i am doing it because i want people to see the stuff and it usually goes better the more you have because why would you look at someone getting like one figure when you could look at the YouTuber who gets five figures at once or five bunnies at once. It's all about catching attention. But that doesn't mean that this is regular. You can just order one figure for a year and you're totally a figure collector. It has nothing to do with mass. And look at it from this side. The more you order, the more your 
detoffs, your space will fill up and then you will have no space anymore. So be a little bit selective and take your time to collect. You don't need to have 100 figures in one year. That's, you don't need to do this. It would really hurt your budget if you go out of this way. But if this is your way of collecting, that's totally fine as well. So of course my camera had to die right now at the <laughs> crucial moment. Anyway, I think I've said everything that I wanted to say. Just don't get swept into the motion of everything and just relax, take your time. Because sometimes I have the feeling this hobby can be really stressful because you need to do it right now or the figure will be gone. Do it now. No, 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 no. No, you don't need to do this. Just take your time in deciding whether you want this figure or not. So I hope all my tips are a little bit helpful for you guys. I could do a few more tips, so maybe there will be a second video if you like this one and would to have no more tips, do write me down. If you want to know more about it, then I will consider doing a second video about tips for beginners. So yeah, that was everything for this one. I hope you had fun. I hope it was informative enough. If you liked what you saw, maybe consider giving me a like and a subscribe. And of course, write me your opinions down below in the comments. And I will catch you otherwise in the next one. Until then, bye bye.